First of all, I bow down and offer my heart like flowers thousands of times at the feet of my spiritual master. Nitilila Pristom Vishnu Pad Ashto Tarasat Sishimat Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I bow down with great respect at the feet of my Guru's Guru and his Guru and his Guru and all the this is these are all of our gurus going back thousands of years to see Krishna. And finally, I offer my pranam to all of you, my very dear brothers and sisters. So this festival is called the Festival of Vedic Culture. That means that we are sharing a teaching which is based on Veda. So in the beginning of time, the message of the Vedas was revealed by Sri Krishna Himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So you will find that these statements, the descriptions given in the Vedas are always completely perfect and correct. So sometimes the Vedas are called Veda Mata, like your mother. We see, especially today, it's very common that someone is born and it's not very clear who that person's father is. Mm-hmm. So when that child grows up, if he wants to find out who his father is, then he can follow the path of empirical investigation by going around asking every man who is at least about 16, 17 years older than himself. Are you my father? And they may or may not own up. So it's a very hit or miss method. The other, the other method is he can go to his mother and say, Mama, what's the name of my father? And that which was beyond his power of sensation, beyond, beyond his physical perception. At the time of his conception, he was only just a few cells. So he had no uh, possibility to see who his father was. 
But his mother can give him perfect information, which is beyond his own experience. So the Vedas are considered to be mother. And the Guru is also considered to be like father. Why? Because we are not this physical body, we are spiritual souls. And in accordance with our karma from our last life and the lives before that, we are taking birth again and again in different bodies, lifetime after lifetime. And this is called Sangsa Chakra, the cycle of birth and death. It keeps moving and moving. Until all of our avidya, ignorance is removed by the mercy of Guru. So Guru, like father, gives mantra of the Vedas which is like mother and as a mother and father give you a new life so by the combination of the spiritual master and the mantras of the Vedas your soul has a new life that is instead of moving in the lifetime after lifetime in material life you attain a beautiful spiritual body which is eternal and full of bliss. И когда нам посчастливится встретить духовного учителя, то происходит переворот в нашей жизни. Он, как отец, дает нам ведическую мантру, которая становится нашей матерью, и наша душа обретает новое рождение, и благодаря которому ей не придется снова и снова перерождаться в этом круговороте рождения и смерти. That means you attain a new life in the eternal loving pastimes of God. То есть у вас будет новая жизнь, новое бытие в духовных и в духовном плане существования, где живет Господь и Его преданные. So, if a person has been wandering many lifetimes in this world and they meet some saints, если человек душа провела множество жизней, странствуя в этом мире, и наконец-то человеку посчастливится встретить and they listen to the message of the Vedas. И человек выслушает послание Вед из уст святой личности. At first, the person may think, "Oh, that's interesting." Изначально человек может проявить простое любопытство, подумает, "Да, интересно." But they don't act on it. Но не будет ничего внедрять в свою жизнь. But by the touch of the blessings of those saints, in their next life again, they meet some saints and listen to the Vedas. Now they start. This is quite convincing. И может пройдет одна жизнь таким образом. Человек не будет заниматься духовной практикой, но благодаря благословению вот этому даже минимальному контакту контакту со святой личностью в следующей жизни он снова повстречает святых и уже с более глубоким интересом отнесется к услышанному. But at the same time, in their mind, they have place for other candidate theories of reality. И кто-то может привлечь очень сильно ведическими метафизикой, но при этом тоже удерживает другие концепции, какое-то сердце будет привлекать и другие идеологии. Then next life. Еще одна жизнь пройдет. Again they meet saints. No, the человек повстречает святых. And this time their hearts are very open, and the vibration of the Vedic mantras goes inside, and they become very firmly convinced. Ha! This is the path of truth, the path to the highest reality. Но в этот раз человек с полной верой отнесется к услышанному, его сердце будет уже открыто на распашку для вот этих ведических знаний, для этого пути преданного служения. And their path of bhakti yoga, devotion, pure transcendental devotion begins. И тогда человек начнет свое путешествие по пути пути чистой преданности, бхакти йоги. Because they have received the seed of devotion, sraddha. Sraddha means the implicit trust in the truthfulness of the Vedic statements. Потому что у человека уже в сердце есть семя, шрадха, вера, такая полная вера в правдивость ведических учений. And so that seed, that is like a seed. And if they give water to that seed every day by listening, hearing the message of the Vedas and chanting their mantra, the seed will sprout and it will begin to grow. And you know, like Jack and the Beanstalk, it will grow and it will go beyond the material universe and up to the transcendental world. Священных Писаний и служению, то подобно тому, как в сказке про Джека и Поповый Стручок, 
Он это... начал расти, и он дорос до другой планеты. Человек, эта вера дорастет до другого плана существования, за пределы that, Вселенной. That creeper of devotion, which is growing in the heart, covers, goes through the coverings of the material universe and up to the planet of Krishna. То есть вот эта, эта лиана веры начнет расти, расти выше, выше и вырастет за пределы материальной Вселенной и дотянется до планеты на, на духовной планеты, на которой живет Кришна. And then it bursts into flower. И там эта лиана распустится, на ней появятся цветочки. The flowers means ecstatic emotions. Цветы это экстатические эмоции. And then a fruit appears. А затем вырастет плод. That is called the prem fal, the fruit of love of God. Плод любви к Богу. And this fruit is very soft and juicy. Этот плод очень мягкий, он сочный. Mm. So the devotee is sitting here in this world and chanting mantra, but he's tasting the juicy fruit of love for Krishna in the spiritual world. So if you want to taste that fruit of divine love, first you have to receive the seed. And that seed is the Shraddha, the faith in the Vedas. It's a gift actually, it's not a, a mental a type of intellectual conviction. Only when we give honor, respect to a pure Guru and we bow down and render service, then as a blessing, this implicit conviction manifests itself in the heart spontaneously by a blessing. So this evening, I want to share with you one history from the Bhagavad Purana, which tells a very profound mystery of the Vedas in relation to mantra. So please come with me. We're already in South India, we have to go more further south. There is a place called Kanyakubja. And one young Brahmin is living there. His name is Ajamil. Actually, Ajamil, he is also like uh, a representative of all of us. Because the word Aja in Sanskrit means Maya, illusion. And Mil means meeting or mixed. So that soul who is Aja Mil, <laughs> mixed in with illusion. That is the condition of the, all the people of this world. They're like that Ajami. So, he was a very pious young man. He used to take care of his old parents. And he had a very young and beautiful wife. And every day he used to perform yagyas, fire sacrifices. One day he went into the forest to collect some wood. And there he saw one very low caste person, Sudra, who was uh, drinking, he was completely intoxicated. So this, this was in many millions of years ago in the golden age of Satya Yuga. So to see a person who was so very, uh, in a fallen condition, intoxicated, was very rare. And also, that drunken person was with a prostitute. And they were enjoying lusty activities together. 
So, in those days, you could, it was very rare to see such things. If in Goa, you could look everywhere. It's the only thing that you see break. <laughs> За каждым коттеджем, но в те времена это было чем-то недопустимым. Даже подумать о таком было страшно, что что-то кто-то таким может заниматься. But, but Ajamil, it was a shock. И поэтому Аджамил был в полном шоке, когда When he saw it, he looked away. Oh, you should not look at these very sinful puppy, sinful people. И увидев эту сцену, он тут же в шоке отвернулся, подумав на такую скверну нельзя смотреть. But what happened? The image. Of these uh, sinful activities entered into his eyes and into his heart through the eyes. So though he turned his face away, it was still inside. So he tried not to look, but he could not check himself, and he looked again. And then he quickly ran home. So then every day he was trying to do his daily practice. Taking bath in the holy river and performing the fire sacrifice. But he could not control his mind. And slowly, slowly that image in his heart became bigger and bigger and he became himself very, very lusty. То есть у него появилось множество фантазий, связанных с тем, что он увидел, и вот постоянно обуревали его сознание, он не мог выкинуть это из головы, и сам стал постепенно испытывать сильное вожделение. И ему захотелось самому встретиться с этой куртизанкой. Он выведал, где она живет. And he completely fell in love and wanted to be married to her. И вдруг он влюбился в нее так сильно, захотел на ней жениться. So he threw out his very good wife. And he threw out his old parents also. Very bad. And he was living with that very licentious lady. And she was very demanding. I want more gold bangles, more rings, more earrings, more saris. So to keep her happy. He became a thief. He used to kidnap people. He used to burglarize people's homes and rob them. And in this way, by like mafia criminal activities, he was just enjoying. And with that lady, he had ten children. In this way, his life was passing by, and he came to the age of 88. So his tenth child, when the child was born, he gave the child the name Narayan. So Narayan is the name of God. So he was not thinking about God, he was always thinking about his son and called, Hey, Narayan, come here, sit on my lap. Narayan, eat some sweets. Oh, Narayan, go to sleep, go to sleep. And so he was always saying the name of God, Narayan, 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 Narayan. Not to actually refer to God, only to speak to his son. He 
his heart was melting. He was feeling so much love for his son. And gradually the time came, the last moment of his life. He was lying in bed. And suddenly he saw approaching him three very ferocious personalities. Три монстра, которые приближались к нему. They had pointed ears. С такими ушами. And sharp teeth. Заостренными ушами. They were covered in hair. Огромными клыками. Они были волосатыми. And they were carrying ropes in their hands. И в руках они несли веревки. And the three of them grabbed him and they put the rope around his neck and they were... They were pulling his soul out of his body. And when he, when he saw them, he was terrified. Huh? So this is what happens. Hmm? If a person, they don't live a pious life, in the last moment, then they will see the, called the Yamadutas, the messengers of death. Вот эта делегация ждет как раз грешников, которые не живут жизнь правильным образом, и в последнем мгновении жизни им сулит повстречаться с вот этими ямадутами. Actually, I had a friend in Germany. У меня есть друг в Германии. And uh, his grandfather, he had a near-death experience. И его дедушка испытал вот такое состояние смерти. And in the last moment of his life. Then he saw these ferocious creatures were running towards him to, with ropes to take him away. But somehow or other he didn't die, he was resuscitated. Huh? And then afterwards he saw so Srimad Bhagavatam and there was a painting of this very story and he looked and said, those are the guys I saw them. He himself, he never knew anything about the Vedas, he had no belief in anything at all, he was a complete atheist. And when he opened the Srimad Bhagavatam, his grandson gave to him, he went, oh, I saw it. <laughs> it was me, I was Ajamil. Позже его внук подарил ему Шримад Бхагаватам, и когда дедушка стал листать, смотреть на иллюстрации, он увидел изображение вот этих ямадутов, и он закричал, это они, это они за мной приходили, хотя он никогда ничего не знал, ни о ведах, ни о Шримад Бхагаватам. И он показал, сказал, вот они приходили за мной, он подумал, я как Ачи, это Аджамил. So don't think what I'm telling is any type of fiction or fantasy. Поэтому не думайте, что это какие-то байки, сказки, фантазии. This is the real thing. Это реальность. And I hope that you never get to see it. In fact, just by being here tonight and singing in the kirtan, it's yeah. not likely that you'll experience this. So, when he saw these creatures, he was terrified. And he remembered his son. And though his son was only five years old, but out of attachment for him, he called, No, no, no! And that moment, could you imagine if you were so terrified? Then how would you call out the name of Narayan? Something like that, yes. <laughs> but he wasn't calling God, he was calling his child. Huh? And as he said, Narayana, four syllables. Then suddenly it was as if four suns were appearing in the sky at the same time. And as that blazing light of the suns came closer, he saw it was four very, very beautiful persons with a bluish complexion and four arms. Four arms each. And at once they cut the rope. And he, his subtle body, his astral body was being pulled out of his physical body and they cut the rope and he came back into his. And then he was looking 
the four messengers, three messengers of death, and the four Vishnu Duts, the messengers of Bhagavan. The messengers of death said, hey, what are you doing? We have a right to take him away. Don't you know who he is? He's been so such a criminal, a murderer, a drug addict, a womanizer. So we, it's our right, we have to take him to the abode of Yamaraj, the abode of death. Where he will undergo rehabilitation. In the form of so many different types of suffering. So then, the Vishnu Dutas, the messengers of God, they said, He is completely pure. Then the Yama Dutas, they couldn't believe it. How can you say he's completely pure? We actually have a list of all of his activities. The Vishnu Dutas, they said, Sanketyam parihasyam ba stogam helanam eva va vaikunta nam grahanam asheshagam haram vidhu Don't you know that millions and millions of sins, mountains and mountains of bad karma is all destroyed in a moment just by the vibration of the name of Krishna. А Вишнудуты ответили, Ямадутам, вы разве не знаете, что миллионы и миллионы греховных поступков, целые горы греха не раз, разрушаются мгновенно, когда человек произносит одно слово, одно имя Кришны. And it doesn't matter whether you actually calling God or whether you saying just the name but referring to something else. И не важно, если человек этим именем призывает Господа или просто называет кого-то этим именем. That is called Sankhetya. When you, you say the name. The mantra of God, but it's you're not even thinking about Him. You're thinking about something else. Uh, so sanketyam parihasa. Even if you say the name of Krishna for a joke. Hmm? You know, sometimes we sing the kirtan on the beach. And so there are many drunk people there, and they see the kirtan. Hari Krishna, Hari Hari Krishna, and they just start joking and dancing. Huh? So Sanketya Paramahatma, if you say referring to something else or even just for a joke. Stobham. Stobham means for um, keeping time in music. It's a, it's a uh, part of the Indian musical system that when you're singing a song, then sometimes there's a gap in between the lines, so then you just sing the name of God in between the lines. Sita Kamala Kucha Mandala Hari Sita Kamala Like this, so they sing one line and then they sing Hari Hari And then they come back to the line again like. So just for keeping time in music Even if you say the name of God, but still the power is there Helena, Helena means neglect without any concentration more bad karma than you can possibly commit is all destroyed in a second. The first time you utter the vibration of the syllables of the names of Krishna. So someone may say, but wait a minute. God is not stupid. If you're calling someone else but using his name, he knows you're not calling him, you're calling someone else. <laughs> but still it works. Why is that? The Vishnu Dutas said, 
सर्वेशम इदम एवासु निष्कृतम नाम व्याहरणा विष्णु यथस्थ विषया मति इट मीन्स दट इफ अ पर्सन स्टील्स गोल्ड Это значит, если человек украдет золото, убьет брахмана, 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 Yathastad Vishayamati, because if you say the name of Krishna, even if you are not thinking of him, when you say the name of Krishna, he is thinking of you. Tad Vishayamati means that the consciousness of God becomes absorbed in thinking of you. Just when you utter his name. It's so powerful. Now there's a very confidential and scientific reason for this. Actually, perhaps you know, in Christian theology, it is said that in this world all things have uh, essence and existence. Объясняется, что в этом мире у всего есть эссенция и существование, то есть суть и существование. For example, this is a bottle. Например, это бутылка. So its essence is that it's a bottle. Это суть этого предмета, что это бутылка. And uh, even if there were no bottles in the world, but still the essence, essential idea of bottle would be there. So when existence, that is the substance from which is made, when the substance is added to the essence, it makes an object. So everything is a combination of its essence, what it is, and what it's made of. То есть есть концепция, потом появляется материя и появляется объект. But for God, there's no difference between existence and essence. Но для Бога нет. His essence is his existence. Между ним и его существованием, его сутью, он и есть суть и бытие, он все. So this is Christian theology. Это христианская теология. And the Vedas they tell the same. Но веды подтверждают эту же идею. That the form of Krishna is called Krish means existence. His his existence and his essence are non-different. Это бытие, то есть существование Кришны, он сам, они не отличны друг от друга. There's no duality in him. В Боге нет дуальности. His name Krishna, his form, his qualities, his pastimes, they are all one indivisible reality. Господь это неделимая реальность, то есть он, его тело. Его имя, его качество это одно целое, нет разницы между ними. So, when you were born, you had no name. Когда вы родились, у вас не было имени. After you were born, your parents gave you a name. Позже родители дали вам какое-то имя. And it may be that later you moved to another country and applied for passport, and you can change your name. И в некоторых странах есть законы, что человек может поменять имя на любое другое, которое ему захочется. So your name is not part of your existence or your essence, nothing. Имя не. It's superficial. Имя это что-то внешнее, какое-то. Арбитральное, но не суть, не выражает вашу суть и не является неотъемлемой частью того, кем вы являетесь. But God being absolute, the vibration of His name is inseparable from His essence and His existence. Но Господь абсолютен, поэтому Его имя не отъемлемо от Его самого. And so, it does not depend on your intelligence or your meditation power. Mm. So, this concept in Sanskrit is called Vastu Shakti. Means the power of a substance. Just like fire. Fire will burn you whether you know that fire burns you or not. Огонь обожжет вас. Знаете вы об этом или не знаете? Не важно. A child doesn't know about the the danger of fire, so the child can put his hand in the fire and he'll be burned. Ребенок не ведает о том, что огонь опасен. Он засунет свою руку в пламя и тут же получит ожог. So in the same way, the holy name 
is has vastu shakti it has its own potency which doesn't depend on your un- understanding doesn't depend on your intelligence своя сила которая никак не зависит от вашего восприятия вашей веры или ваших способностей то есть это качество святого имени so he said vastu shakti hi buddhi na apekshate vastu shakti means the power that does not depend on your conceptualization. So even though Ajamil in his conception he was calling his son. But because the name of Krishna is inseparable from his divine Swarup, therefore when he called the name, then at once all of his the karma was destroyed. Because God is pure. So even though the Yama Dutas, the messengers of death came to take him away, but the Vishnu Dutas came and said, no, no, he has no bad karma. So then, uh, the Yamadutas they left. And they went back to their boss, Yamaraj, the god of death. They said, oh my lord, Yamaraj, god of death. All day, every day we are very busy. We go around the world. Visiting, you know, car accidents and plane crashes, old people's homes. And wherever someone's karma for this life is coming to an end, we come and we take them away. Mm-hmm. And no one could ever stop us. So we were very proud thinking, oh Yamaraj, God of death. You are the most powerful authority. No one has more authority than you. But today, someone stopped us. So the God of Death said, yes, I am not supreme authority. The very beautiful Krishna, the eternal Supreme Lord is uh, the authority of all. And what to speak of him, I have no authority over any of his devotees. So I am instructing you. Uh, if you ever see someone wearing this Tosimala or Tilak, or they're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Never go near them. I have no authority over those persons. So the, the Yamadutas were confused. How can this person be purified of all of his karma only by saying a name of God, Narayana. Yamaraj told them, this is a very deep mystery of the Vedas. Even though there are great sages who are meditating for thousands of years in the Himalayas, but there are still secrets which are unknown to them. The secret of the power of the holy name is only known to the twelve Mahajans. Twelve great personalities. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu Kumar Kapilo Manu Prahlad Janako Vishnu Bali Vayasaki Vayam Lord Brahma Mahadev Shiva Here he is right here Shiva Shiva knows these glories of the name 
And Narad, the great sage Narad, Bhishma Dev Prahlad, the Kumaras, Kapil Dev, Swayam Bhuva Manu, Shukadev Goswami, Vyasa Dev, and Yama said, and myself. And those who are following us, they can understand the secret. What is that? Eitavad eva loke ismin puman dharmam parasmita bhakti yogo bhagavati tan nama grahana dibihi The highest spiritual activity that any person can do in the whole world is bhakti, devotion to God. And the most prominent activity and first activity on the path of bhakti yoga, is to chant the holy names. So whether you understand it or not, when you engage in the kirtan, singing the names of Krishna, your karma has been destroyed. And slowly, slowly, if you practice every day, then the ego will begin to dissolve. And after some time you will see God. And He will smile at you. <laughs> He'll be very pleased, you know, it said Krishna is always smiling. You know why? Because those who are not his devotees can't see. So he, he, only, and he, he only sees his devotees and because he loves them, so he smiles. So this is the highest secret of the Vedas. Whether you understand it or not, just try. Be in the, in the guidance of a very qualified guru, spiritual master. Who can teach you how to chant in such a way that the ego will be dissolved and there will be beautiful darshan of the supreme loving Krishna. This is the perfection of life even for Krishna himself. The greatest devotee of Krishna is the goddess Radha. She is the full embodiment of all love. So one day Sri Krishna was wandering in the forest of Vrindavan, playing his flute. And by his flute he is calling his beloved Radha. But she did not come. So Krishna sat down with tears in his eyes. Oh, when will I see my Shimati? So Krishna told his friend Madhu Mangal, please, go to her house and bring her here to meet with me secretly in the forest. So when Madhu Mangal went to her house, he was looking, he was trying to get in, but there were many gods there, like Jutila and Kutila and Abhimanyu. So it was impossible for him to bring Radha. So then Madhu Mangal was thinking, I, I can't go back to Krishna empty-handed. Because Krishna is burning in the fire of love in separation. And if I don't bring Radha soon, then perhaps he will not see another sunrise. It's very critical. <laughs> so then Madhu Mangal had an idea. <laughs> Secretly he took one leaf of a lotus. Yeah. And he, in sandalwood paste, in chandan, he wrote something. And then he folded it up. 
So then he went back through the forest. And Krishna saw his friend coming. He was very uh, expectant. With great anticipation he thought, oh, Radharani should be Or at least news of where I can meet her. So then Madhu Mangal came there and he just gave Krishna the rolled up lotus leaf. And Krishna very, uh, with great curiosity opened it. And there he saw two syllables. Ra, Dha. Ra and Dha. Hmm? You know in Sanskrit? This letter is Ra, Ra, and this letter is Da, Da. So this is why Krishna always wears peacock feathers in his hair. <coughs> Because if you have on the left side, if you have a peacock feather leaning over to the left side, then the shape of the feathers is like a Ra, and then there's an eye in the in the middle of the peacock feather like a Da. So he always keeps it there because the name Ra. So when Sri Krishna read these two syllables, Radha, he went into ecstasy. Because it's the power of the divine name, if someone's heart is pure, the name will pull them into a state of trance and there they will see that very person who is described by the name. So, just by reading Radha, then Krishna in his heart, he had the darshan, he saw his beautiful beloved standing before him. And he took his friend by his hand and said, Oh, Madhu Mangal, you have saved my life. Thank you, thank you. So when will that day be ours? When we sing the holy name and go into samadhi, into trance and see the beautiful forms of Radhana So that day can come sooner than you think, but you have to start from today practicing it. Начинать надо прямо сейчас, не откладывая.